Now sometimes having these settings in the web config file is great. It gives better visibility to the settings, uh, allows the developers to have some control in the development process, um, it gives some better control if you're in any type of shared hosting environment. But sometimes we, we don't want to have those settings in the web config file. The real classic example is you have a development team that's working in development. They have their web config file for their ASP.NET site. And then you have your IIS team that's, that's creating settings. And in the deployment process, those web config files from development get pushed into production and overwrite the settings that were set by the IIS team. So let's look at how to move certain settings out of the web config file and back into the IIS config. So let's again use the default document as an example. And we're going to go up to the root of the server and come down to the module called Feature Delegation. What Feature Delegation does is control which settings are stored in the web config file and which settings are stored in the IIS config. So let's look for the default document setting. So there's default document. And you can see right now it's set to read write. That means that the application will be able to read that setting and the web config file is going to be able to set that setting. Now if we set it to read only, that means the application will still be able to read what setting is set, but it will not be able to change that setting in any way. And not delegated means that it would not be able to do either. It won't be able to read the setting and it won't be able to change the setting. So let's set that setting to read only. That's usually just fine for um, these purposes. So we're going to set it to read only, which means the web config file is no longer in use. So if we go back to site2.com and we open up that web config file, we're going to see that the settings are still there. It doesn't actually change the web config file when we change that setting in feature delegation. Now you would think at this point it would have taken this, this setting, moved it into the IIS config, and it would just ignore this section of the system.web server namespace. However, we find if we go to site2.com, we do a refresh on the page, we get this nasty 500 error. And what's happening is because that because feature delegation doesn't allow us to set the default document through the web config, but the web config file still has these settings, it, it throws a 500 instead of just gracefully ignoring it. So let's remove these settings from the web config. Whoops. We're going to save that file. Come back here to site2.com where we refresh the page. We see that now we get the 403 error. So it's getting past the web config file but it didn't move my settings back and it didn't save my settings anyways. It just dropped them. We see that there's no um, settings set here. So we have to come back and add our, let's look at what file we're looking for, home.htm. So we add home.htm to the list. We go back to my web browser. We refresh the page and we're back and working just fine. So now we've seen how we get that setting out of the web config file. We see that also as we do any type of migration from and feature delegation going from read only um, to read write or, or vice versa, um, it, it's very cumbersome. We've got to be very aware of what the settings were and go back and reset them. To make the situation even worse, let's do the opposite now. Let's go from read only back to read write. So if we come up here to plural site, the root of our server, we go to feature delegation, we go back to default document, we set that to read write. We come back here to the default document setting. Um, it looks like this home.htm is inherited, even though it, it's not. And if we go to, um, in fact, let's prove that. Let's go back to default document, the root. We see that home.htm is not in the list. But in that migration process, going from read only to read write, it kind of puts us in this state that, this nebulous state that's not really accurate. Now, if we pull up the web config file, um, Let's reopen that just to verify we look at the latest one. We see it's not set in here. So this home.htm value is, is kind of coming, it's there by mistake. It really shouldn't be there um, when we look at all the other um, settings around it, but it, it's there. And in fact, if we go to site2.com, let's do a refresh, it's actually functioning. This setting is actually what IIS is currently using. So we, we've gotten ourselves in this really, this really odd state. So whenever we go from read only back to read write, it's always a good idea. Revert to parent. Let's just get it back to a known state. And then we can add our home.htm setting again. We go to our web config file. We see now it's in the home. Or I'm sorry, in the web config file like it's supposed to be. 
and our site's still working. So whenever we do any migrations from going read-only to read-write or vice versa, it's always a good idea. Just go through those settings, make sure everything's looking like it's supposed to be looking so you don't end up in this state that you're not really, you know, not really supposed to be in.